We've all had them, some louder than others, some longer than others, and some more inconvenient than others. What am I talking about, you may ask? Hiccups! Jason, the life side guy. Science is cool. Jason, the life side guy. The mechanism behind the hiccup involves the respiratory system, the system involved with breathing in and making energy for our bodies. As seen in this diagram, the respiratory system might seem complex with organs such as the lungs, the diaphragm, the larynx, and the pharynx, but it's much more simpler than that, and we'll break it down with a visual on the whiteboard. The respiratory system consists of many different parts, but let's focus on the three big ones first. There's the trachea, otherwise known as the windpipe, and allows for air to flow to the lungs, which are the large structures seen in the green. Underneath the lungs is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a structure, primarily made of muscle, and moves in sync with your breathing. When we breathe in or inhale, this is how our diaphragm appears. With hiccups, it suddenly contracts and remains downwards, away from the lungs as much as possible. But with exhaling or breathing out, note how the diaphragm moves upward. When we breathe out, the diaphragm relaxes and moves closer to the lungs. Now let's talk about nerves. What are nerves? Well, we all know what our brain is, and it's the control center of our body. Nerves are messengers to and from the brain that carry messages from one area of the body to the other. In the case of hiccups, there are two main nerves that are involved, and any physical triggers or harmful things that simulate even the tiniest area of these nerves could lead to hiccups as a response by our body. The first nerve, highlighted in red, is the vagus nerve, and is located in the lower neck region, almost near the windpipe or trachea that we talked about earlier. The second nerve is the phrenic nerve, located between the lungs and the diaphragm. Understanding how the diaphragm works might be a bit difficult, so let's do a demo to help us explain this. Can I have a volunteer from the audience? Afra, come on down. So for our demo today, we'll be using a balloon, specifically the top part of the balloon, to represent the diaphragm. So when we exhale, the diaphragm relaxes and retains a dome shape. But when we inhale, the diaphragm contracts and moves down. The medical term for hiccups is singultus, which comes from the Latin root singult, which means trying to catch your breath while sobbing. Now let's chat about what makes that annoying hick sound when we hiccup. It's actually quite a simple process, really. Located right above the trachea or the windpipe is the larynx, otherwise known as the voice box containing our vocal cords, and we use this to speak, whisper, and yell. One of the structures located at the top of the larynx is the glottis, and it's basically this opening that our body controls to make sounds. Like the diaphragm, the glottis can contract too. In the case of hiccups, the glottis contracts unexpectedly, closing the larynx, and effectively the windpipe. That hick sound is a result of the blast of air we breathe stopping at the closed glottis. Did you know humans are not the only ones that hiccup? Even horses hiccup. In fact, all mammals hiccup. Now let's take a look at three common categories of cures for the hiccups. It's important to note that there are very limited studies that support these cures, and they're mainly based on personal experiences. Exhibit A involves interrupting or stimulating the mechanisms behind breathing, with possible cures being breath holding, hyperventilation, breathing in, breathing out quickly, or inducing sneezing with pepper. Exhibit B involves irritating the uvula or nasopharynx, or in other words, areas past our tongue. Some of these supposed cures include gargling water, drinking water quickly, or even swallowing dry granulated sugar. With Exhibit C cures, we focus on the irritation of diaphragm during the hiccup and physically oppose the action of the diaphragm. This can be done by pulling our knees to the chest, or sitting and leaning forward to compress the chest. A man named Charles Osborne from Iowa had the hiccups for 60 years. That's almost 19,000 hiccups per day. Jason, the life side guy. Jason, the life side guy.